Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Green life is full of wondrous phenomena about which no one knows entirely. Still, here we have gathered some of the craziest ways in which sea creatures give birth. Incredible, unbelievable, and sacrificial. Stay tuned till the end, as we're going to reveal the most wondrous of all sea births caught on camera. Seahorse. It is the male in seahorses who takes care of their eggs and newborn babies. Soon after mating, mother seahorses transferred its eggs into a pouch on the male's body. They incubate their developing embryos in this pouch. It is the equivalent of the uterus of female mammals. It contains a placenta, supporting the growth and development of baby seahorses. Seahorse dads not only take care of their kids from predators, but also provide nutrients and oxygen to their babies during this process, using some of the same genetic instructions as mammalian pregnancy. When these baby seahorses become enabled to survive in seawater, the father lets them go out of his pouch. Even after being freed, they came back to the pouch when they felt danger. Suriname Toad With its flat, flounder-like face, triangle-shaped head, and tiny eyes, the Suriname Toad doesn't look like most other toads. It also doesn't give birth like one. In one of the strangest birth methods in the animal kingdom, babies erupt from a cluster of tiny holes in their mother's back. Baby toads don't go through a larval or tadpole stage, instead erupting from mom's back as fully formed, half-inch toadlets after about three to four months. Though such back-breaking labor may seem odd, it's actually safer for the newborns. Sealed into mom's back, they're less vulnerable from predators, making toads a great example of parental care. Newly hatched toadlets swim away on their own, but still need to be taken care of by their mother. Yellowhead Jawfish This is the yellowhead jawfish, a mouth brooder, meaning that the male incubates the eggs in his mouth until they hatch. The fries are then released into the water column, where they fend for themselves. While most fish release their eggs and larvae into the open water, yellowhead jawfish keep their eggs in their mouths until they're fully developed and hatch. This behavior helps to protect the fry from predators and gives them a higher chance of survival. The incubation period for jawfish eggs is about seven to nine days, so they keep eggs in their mouths during this period. Normally, dad jawfish are unable to eat anything during this hatching. Their mouth remains the best shelter for the baby fishes, even after incubation. Giant Water Bug These brown, flattened bugs lurk in freshwater habitats around the world, ambushing their prey and sucking it dry. They can get up to two to three inches in length. They are good dads because their males took up female eggs on their backs. And this is how this process takes place. It's not as easy as it looks, because it takes six hours for the female giant water bug to lay eggs on the male's back. After getting more than 150 eggs on its back, survival becomes difficult for him, as he cannot swim the way he used to before having the eggs on his back. The dad has to face this difficulty until the eggs hatch. Then, life again becomes normal for him until he mates again. Octopus do you know a female octopus reproduces only once in her whole life? It's because she dies around the time their eggs hatch. She puts her all available energy into generating and caring for her eggs. She finds a den and lays her eggs there. After that, she does not eat and spends her whole time caring for the eggs, cleaning them and aerating them. Sometimes she eats the male octopus if he's weaker than her, but even this does not help her survive. It's likely that octopuses have evolved mechanisms enabling them to match the number of eggs they produce to their available energy. So she definitely remains alive till all the eggs hatch, and then dies of starvation. Dolphin. And here's another phenomenal reproductive mechanism of the sea kingdom. Reproductive mechanisms of the bottlenose dolphins. They give birth instead of giving eggs, and their pregnancy can last from 10 months to 12 months. Unlike other mammals, the baby is usually born tail first. The reason behind it is the threat of drowning, because this process takes place in the water. During the birth process, other dolphins of the herd remain around the mother dolphin to protect her and her baby from any unexpected situation, like attacks by predators. 
Soon after birth, the mother dolphin takes the baby on the water surface to open its lungs with fresh air. The newborn is fully dependent on its mother until being able to catch fish. Kitchlid and Cuckoo Catfish and now, get ready to know about the craziest birth mechanism in which the babies of one fish grow in its enemy's mouth safely and are fed by eating the enemy's own babies. Doesn't that sound crazy? Yeah, you've got it. We're talking about Kitchlid and Cuckoo Catfish. Kitchlid moms are mouth brood, which means they keep their eggs and babies in their mouths. And the Cuckoo Catfish takes advantage of it by cleverly placing its own eggs with the Kitchlid's eggs. Baby catfishes eat all the babies of Kitchlid and remain in its mouth until they become ready to survive in the sea. And amazingly, or maybe foolishly, the Kitchlid remains unaware of the whole process till the end and takes care of them. Snails. This process isn't as easy and smooth as it may look. These are the visuals with increased speed. Normally, it took three to six days to complete this process, in which the snails lay more than 80 eggs. These eggs take two weeks to hatch. This process could take place multiple times in a year. Some lay their eggs in a really well-organized manner, whereas some can't wait to get them out, so lay eggs randomly. Here, it might seem like newborns don't have shells, but yeah, they do, although the shell is transparent and soft to begin with. They need calcium to harden it, so the first thing they do is to eat the casing of their own eggs to absorb the calcium. Squid. It was initially assumed that squids, like other fishes, used to deposit their eggs on the sea floor and left them to develop on their own. Yeah, it's true. But if we talk about gonatids, they have their own methods to do so. This is how they carry mass eggs in their arms. They generally use hooks on their arms to hold them, which consists of two thin membranes in a continuous flat sheet, open at both the distal and proximal ends. The egg mass forms a hollow tube that extends from the mouth to well beyond the end of the arms and contains about 2,000 to 3,000 eggs. Depending on water temperature, it takes about six weeks for the squid eggs to hatch. Sea Cucumber And now, let's take a look at another unique way to give birth in seawater. Yeah, right, we're talking about sea cucumbers. With elongated cucumber-like bodies that are thickest in the middle, they have distinct front and rear ends, with ten finger-like tentacles around their mouth. Unlike most species of holothurians, in which fertilization is external, followed by a free-living larval stage, S. hydroformis broods its young internally, suspended in the maternal coelomic fluid. During this period, the developing young receive maternal nutrition. The juveniles later spawn through a rupture of the body wall, during spawning, sea cucumbers develop a cobra-like appearance, with their front end raised up from the bottom. Newborns spend several weeks floating in the water before being fully shaped like a perfect sea cucumber. Clownfish. If we talk about the most popular fish of the aquarium kingdom, the clownfish, they reproduce via external fertilization in which females lay their eggs on a flat rock surface close to their host and enemy, and then males swim over the eggs and fertilize them. As is common for fish species, parental care of clownfish offspring is carried out by the males. Once a female has laid her eggs, then he guards them throughout the incubation period. Males help the eggs develop by fanning them with their fins to increase water circulation, and therefore, oxygen supply. Males also eat any eggs that are infertile or damaged by fungus. However, this period of paternal care ends once clownfish eggs hatch after which the juveniles must fend for themselves. Horn Shark There are over 500 species of shark living in waters around the world, and the majority give birth to live young. But there are some sharks who lay eggs. Horn sharks are also one of these few. It means they are oviparous sharks who lay eggs that hatch outside of their mother's womb. Mature females can lay two eggs every 11 to 14 days, and eggs are protected by a stunning, yet practical, spiralized egg case, which the female can wedge into small cracks and crevices in the environment to hide them from potential predators. Every egg case contains one shark pup, which takes between six and nine months to hatch depending on environmental conditions. Undoubtedly, nobody entirely knows the wonders of the sea. 
And now, let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by one of our subscribers. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it on over to us. Who knows, we might even feature it in one of our videos. Do you know, the stingrays give birth to live young babies, not eggs as most people expect of a fish. Stingray mothers keep the eggs inside her body after they hatch, feeding the pups fluids and egg yolks to help them grow. Because of the lifestyle these rays live, newborn babies need to be competent swimmers almost immediately when they're born. There's no time for a baby to learn or grow before needing to survive in the wild. So after a few short minutes of disorientation, while they figure out which way is up and how their muscles work, the baby rays can swim, move, and survive just like their adult mother. No parental care needed. See you next time.